Today on Forbes, Diamond Disruptor, meet the nerdy king of bargain bling. Inside his rehabbed warehouse in South San Francisco, with its line of glowing plasma reactors the size of minivans, Martin Rosheisen, CEO and co-founder of Diamond Foundry, unveils a four-inch single crystal diamond wafer. He says it was cut from a palm-sized 423-carat rough stone, the biggest man-made diamond ever, large enough to fashion a set of crown jewels. But Rosheisen, who's 52 years old, presents it as a preview of the age of quantum computing. He says, quote, Every chip in the future will use diamond wafers. Be it for phones, laptops, or cars, diamond will enable ever smaller high-energy electronics. Because the path to making diamond semiconductors passes through an expertise in forging gem-quality stones, Rosheisen sees it as a foregone conclusion that his industry will soon dominate the $85 billion diamond jewelry market. He says Diamond Foundry has tripled diamond output in the past year to 5 million carats and intends to hit 20 million per year in 2025, when his $800 million solar-powered diamond factory in Spain is up and running. At that volume, he'll be producing about 60% as many stones as giant De Beers Group, which mined 35 million carats last year, mostly from Botswana at a much higher cost. We're not talking cubic zirconia or moissanite here. Man-made diamonds are not new. In the 1950s, General Electric forged the first specs by mimicking the high temperatures and pressures deep in the Earth's crust. Today, billions of carats of man-made diamonds are used for industrial applications. But it's taken decades to advance the technology to yield jewelry-quality diamonds in sizes almost unobtainable in nature and indistinguishable from natural stones, unless you have a fluorescence spectroscopy machine. From nothing a decade ago, lab-grown rocks now make up 10% of the 125 million carat annual diamond jewelry trade, at prices often 80% less than natural diamonds. Pandora CEO Alexander Lasik, who started selling lab diamonds in 7,000 stores last year, says, quote, Our average customer has found it difficult getting into mine diamonds from a financial standpoint. We're not taking market share, we're creating more market. While mall jewelers are enjoying great margins selling three-carat, flawless, lab-grown diamond engagement rings for under $4,500, versus more than 10 times that amount at Tiffany & Company, luxury houses like Cartier and Van Cleef & Arpels turn up their noses. Edward Asher, president of the World Diamond Council, says, quote, For the larger sizes, they are so cheap that they have lost all real value. New York diamond legend Martin Rappaport whose RapNet lists more than a million diamonds for sale, says, quote, I have the largest diamond trading network, and I won't move synthetics. They lack scarcity, so they lack value retention. The consumers are really getting screwed here. You'll know in a year or so. I'll bury you with synthetic diamonds in the end. However, Rosheisen thinks it's he who will be doing the burying. It's like how Mikimoto popularized the cultured pearls, he says. Rosheisen adds, quote, it started with Jackie Kennedy not wanting to pay up for natural pearls in favor of those that are cultured. You can still find all natural pearls at outlandish prices, but they're only 1% of the market. It's kind of the same way environmentally conscious consumers are driving exponential growth in the market for plant-based foods. Diamond Foundry, whose tagline reads, Diamonds, Evolved, is betting that it can capture a new generation of jewelry buyers. Mine diamonds have a carbon dioxide footprint of about 170 kilograms per carat, versus 8 kilograms or less for lab-grown. Diamond Foundry aims to be zero carbon. The reactors in Rosheisen's converted Apple warehouse in Wenatchee, Washington, run on hydropower from the Columbia River. The $850 million factory under construction in Spain will use 30 megawatts of solar. Rosheisen, displaying a mix of ambition and confidence, says, quote, we plan to replace all of diamond mining in five years. For full coverage, check out Christopher Hellman's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.